My father, George Forster, was born in the town called Krynitsia, Poland, in 1940. And uh, that was the same year that Hitler invaded Poland. So needless to say, it was, it was not a safe place for Jewish people to live. My father's mother, my grandmother, died either during childbirth or she was taken by Nazis. I was told both stories by different people. Now, what I know to be true is that my father, a young boy, a motherless son, my grandfather, someone named Sigmund, a recent widower, had to escape Poland. My grandfather was a neurologist, he was a doctor, and so he used his medical license to get him jobs to move east out of Poland. He said, apparently, he always wanted to keep one natural and two national borders between him and Hitler at all times. They made it over the course of five years to a place called Tashkent, which is all the way to the east in the, in the, in the USSR, which is now uh, modern day Uzbekistan. And my father, now about five years old, is there with no family, uh, no friends, and my grandfather needed to find a way to get out. And he started a letter writing relationship with someone he knew when he was very young in America. So my grandfather left my father in Tashkent with friends or associates, someone, I don't know, and he flew to America, met this woman called Regine. They hit it off, uh, got married, and my grandfather became a citizen. He then was able to bring my father over. So now my father at seven years old, having been alone in Tashkent for two years, gets on a plane and flies to America by himself. Actually, at the time, he was the youngest person to cross the Atlantic unattended uh, at that point, actually, it was in the newspaper. Uh, my father gets to, gets to Brooklyn. They live in Midwood. Uh, they get a house, and, uh, and they assimilate. They, they live the American dream. My father uh, goes to high school in Brooklyn, goes to college in Brooklyn, uh, follows in his father's footsteps, becomes a neurologist, meets a young nurse uh, at Maimonides Hospital, a woman named Alice, marries her, becomes my mother. And then a few years later, they, they, they have a son, me. Uh, they move out of Brooklyn. They get a house in New Jersey. They get a house with a front lawn. They, they live the true American dream and, and produce a life for me where I can go to a private high school and go to college and live the life that I have. Um, 30 years later, uh, my mother suddenly died. And five years after that, tragically, I lost my father as well. Now, I should mention my mother was an only child, and my father was an only child. And obviously, my grandparents uh, had all been gone. Everyone from my father's side died in the Holocaust. So um, I had neither grandparents nor parents. I had neither aunts nor uncles. I didn't have siblings. I wasn't married, nor did I have kids. So at the age of 35, I, I became an adult orphan. Um, I had never had any relationship to immigration. Um, I never felt like I was a first-generation American or had any meaning associated with that. I just had a great family and, and lived in New Jersey. Um, but the implications of, of genocide became clear that when everyone was gone, I was, I was alone in a very profound and specific way. There was, there was the grief over my loss, but also the sense of isolation. And uh, it was awful. It was, uh, it was a real sense of oblivion. I actually stopped using my last name for a period of time. I wasn't trying to be like Cher. It was just that like, I, I, I didn't know what my last name Forster meant. I didn't know what the meaning, I, th I knew there was meaning behind it, but that meaning was now gone. Uh, it was gone with my father and gone with my family. Two years later, uh, I, I receive a package from Poland with like 15 stamps and some very scraggly writing and I open it up and there's just tons of pictures, some in color, some black and white, some from the 19th century, uh, a number of letters, some written uh, in Polish and English, some typed, some not. This is where the story gets, gets weird. Um, so there's a guy in Poland who, who died and this letter is from his son. Apparently this man in his 60s is going through his father's uh, possessions. He's passed away trying to get the affairs in order. And he finds out that he, this man, who all his life has been a Roman Catholic living in Poland doing his thing, he finds out he's a Jew. So it turns out that this man, who had just passed away, couldn't get out during the Holocaust. And so he did what many people did, was that he hid his religion, he changed his name, he became a Roman Catholic, and kept that secret to himself, never telling his wife nor his kids. So his entire family grew up as a Catholic family, never knowing their origins. And he sent me uh, uh, this massive package. And in this package was a letter describing this story. Get this. In 1960, my grandpa, Sigmund, is a neurologist in Brooklyn doing his thing. A woman, from Poland is on vacation in America. She has some neurological episode. They say, let's get her to a doctor who can speak Polish. She comes to my grandfather. My grandfather sees her, talks to her, treats her and says, we'll, we'll, let's call your doctor back in Poland and figure out a bit about your, your medical history. So he calls her doctor. While talking to her physician, he realizes that he knows this man. And in fact, that's his cousin. 
and he had thought every single person he knew, every part of his family had died in the Holocaust, and in fact, he didn't. This man changed his name, became a Roman Catholic, and he was still alive. And there began an amazing friendship. And I have in my hand, in this package, these letters, my grandfather writing letters to this guy, his cousin, saying, oh, my son George is doing great. He wants to be a doctor. He's going to go to medical school. And I'm reading about my father, who I just recently lost. And there's pictures of him and pictures of many other people. And on the back of all these pictures, written in pencil, is the word name, question mark. You see, this guy who just found out that he's Jewish, just found out that he's got this amazing new family, wants me to answer questions. He says, I'm so curious. I'm so excited to learn about our family. Could you please write the names of these people and send them back to me so I can begin to put a family tree together? The thing is, I didn't know anyone's name. I never asked any questions. I, uh, I never knew to ask about these stories. My father uh, spoke five languages, two of which were Russian and Polish, and in my entire life, I never heard him utter a single word in Polish ever. He had no accent whatsoever. So in addition to the grief of loss, there was also a sense of shame and embarrassment. Like, um, like I was an incurious son, like I didn't ask the questions, I was too self-absorbed, I didn't have a, a relationship enough with my father to know where my family was from even. And I, I took these pictures and I took these letters and I put them uh, in my cupboard and I didn't look at them. I, I couldn't deal with it. A year goes by, another letter comes with more photos and another request saying, hey, I don't know if you got that first package, but I'm really eager to learn about our family. Could you please just get back to me and, and look at some of these photos and tell me where we're from, who are we? Again, I, I, uh, I wasn't able to deal with the package. The difference was this time I took the letter and I, uh, I took it to my office, so I kept it on my desk, so maybe I'd do something with this guy's letter. Separate from all of this, I'm an architect, and a building I'm designing here in Manhattan, just in Chelsea, is gonna be a modular building, meaning the bottom of the building we're gonna build in New York, but the top of it, it's a hotel, all those hotel rooms we're gonna build off-site. We're gonna manufacture them, and in fact, we decided to manufacture them in Krakow, Poland. Last November, I've got to go to Krakow to visit and to look at the construction to see how things are going. And I just, you know, out of curiosity, I just Googled the address of the factory and the address of this guy's letter, because it's right on his letterhead sitting on my desk. And they're 30 miles apart. So, um, so the day before I'm leaving for Poland, I write the email finally and say, Michael, it's me, Danny. Sorry I didn't get back to you two years ago. Um, I'm going to be in Poland tomorrow. Uh, w <laughs> I, I, would you like to meet? Um, I, kept my <laughs> I kept my boundaries together and didn't like lay it all on him. And uh, so I went to Poland. And I got there on Friday, and Saturday was at the factory looking at the stuff, no email. And, and Sunday I was at the factory approving all our stuff, and there was still no email. And get Monday I was getting ready to go. And I got one of those emails where every single uh, character is bold. And he's like, I didn't have Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> So Michael was up at his, his cottage, and, uh, and he's back. He's like, don't leave. I'm coming. I want you to meet my daughter and my sister. We're driving to Krakow. We'll take you to dinner. Stay. So, uh, so Michael, my cousin, I think, comes with his daughter and his sister, and we, um, and we have dinner. And it's lovely, and it's awkward, and it's sweet. His English is decent. My Polish is garbage, but we, we, we stumble through it. Um, and I've been back twice since then, and each time I've gotten to go to his house in the, in the, in the woods, and I've met his daughter's boyfriend, and we, we have a relationship where we send each other funny pictures on WhatsApp. <laughs> now, um, you know, th this, like, genealogical kind of random connection does not take away the sense of grief or loss that I feel, having lost my parents and, and lost my family. It, it, it feels good. There's a connection for sure. But I will say, having gone through the experience, what has changed so significantly for me is the sense of shame that I felt because, uh, because I didn't ask questions. It wasn't that I didn't care or it wasn't that my father didn't want to share his story with me. It's that his story was about creating a different life for me. Uh, so in place of shame, what I now have uh, is a sense of gratitude for my father and I understand him and his story in a different way. Thank you. <laughs>